morning everybody. Thank you so much for joining in. If you haven't done so, then bow down. Put your acne on the earth and humble down. And then raise your kundalini and put yourself in bandhan. It's a li little bit longer talk this morning, but I, I just want to play the whole talk and it's a bit low in volume. So just be in Sahasra. Now, you all have realized by this time that within us lies the peace, the beauty, the glory of our being. There's an ocean of all that. We cannot seek it outside. We have to go within what they call in the meditative state. 
you seek it. You enjoy it. Like when you are thirsty, you go to a river or you go to an ocean. and try to quench your thirst. But even the ocean cannot give you sweet water. So how can anything that is spread outside give you that deep thing that is within you? You are trying to find it find it out outside where it does not lie. It is within us, absolutely within us. It is so simple because it is your own. It is within your reach, just there. Whatever you have been doing, Going out to find the joy, the so-called joy, the so-called happiness, the so-called glory of worldly powers and worldly possessions. You have to reverse it back, the whole thing. You have to project within yourself. It was not wrong that you went out. It was not correct that you went out. You should feel sorry for what you have done so far. It was not the correct way to get to the real joy of life, the real glory of your being. <coughs> It has worked in so many people that you have entered into that subtler understanding. Some people are only at a mental level, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe some are only at a physical level that they can feel it. Doesn't matter. But you are on the correct lines, you are moving correctly. Try to meditate. Meditate more so that you reach your inner being. And this inner being is the vast ocean of bliss which exists in every one of us. Is that vast glorifying flood of light that floods everybody's inner beauty. So to approach it, you have to go within yourself. By denying things which are against it, against your movement. Sometimes the wind can be very, very strong for you to misunderstand that the glory of God is within. But turn back. Every moment, remember that your movement has to be inward. When you move inward, you forget the ideas of your outer glories. A person who is of a very base nature, thinks that if he makes a lot of money, then he has a steep joy, but he has not. He is the most unhappy person, if you go and see him. He is worried about small, small things of life. Uh, you must have heard that people who are very rich are kleptomaniacs. They are worried, they are very miserly. They are worried about a needle here and there. A little thing missing, they get upset. They have so many habits that they can't live without. 
So riches have brought always a curse on human beings. So those he seek only the riches cannot enjoy them. Then there are some better people who think that by ruling others, by getting power, we can achieve. A very great position in life. They too, as you know, fail. You have seen what happens to them. People don't even talk, want to talk about them. Now there are people who get attached to someone, to one person, or to the family, to their children, to their relations, very common in India. That's also not the way you can get to God. That's also so limited, keeps you hanging around them and wasting your energy completely. But if you enter into your being <coughs> fully, then all these things have such meaning. Everything has a meaning there. In the sense, if you possess anything, and if you are that kind of a person who is supposed to be possessing, he never possesses, he's so detached. He's never possessing, he's so detached to God. But he can play around because he's so detached. He can create a drama out of it. He can play with the possessions. and teach lots of lessons to people. He's so detached, so generous. He enjoys his generosity. The whole thing becomes so different, or so dynamic. All the beauty that is created by human beings as possession is exposed before you. And you start enjoying all those things without possessing them. You understand the myth of possession. Same with your powers that people have over other people. Those who try <coughs> to make money out of Sahaja or want to have a kind of a privilege over Sahaja, which can be very subtle. This can go very far. This subtlety goes to this extent that I have seen people try to save money on account of Sahaja Yoga. That's also the attention is on money. To make money or to save money, to make a business out of Sahaja Yoga, it is all absurd. But if you say so, I said, all right, go ahead for a while, try you'll find that Sahaja Yoga is no business. Of course, Sahaja Yogis can work together, can do some business, but Sahaja Yoga is no business. It's business of God, where you have to give everything that you have, not to be attached to anything, not to be attached. There's no money to be paid as such but all your heart is to be poured into it. If you cannot pour your heart into it, you cannot achieve that. Same about power. Some people think that they can even overpower such yogis, impress them, control them. Such people are thrown out of surgery completely. You have to enjoy the power of love that people see you as their protector, as their help, as their support, as their friend. Then is somebody who is a dominating personality. You have to be a fatherhead 
and not a demonic, destructive force which is always threatening everyone. Such people will be thrown out of Sahaja Yoga in no time. They are found out. I have no sympathies with such people, never. That will bring him down in no way. Keep yourself aloof with them. Otherwise, when they are thrown away as tangents from Sahaja Yoga, you might get out with them. So be careful. Then those people waste all their time just thinking about their family, this thing, or those who have never thought of their family also come to Sahaja <coughs> This is a very subtle ground on which they can lose their attention to their spirit. They spoil their children, they spoil their husbands, they spoil their wives. The whole attention goes in a wrong way. And it becomes a very important issue with them, how the marriages are successful, how the children are just staying that day. They don't leave it to God. They have to leave it to God. We are all saints. You have to leave everything to God. In the beginning, in Sahaja Yoga, everybody says, my husband is like that, my wife is like that, my brother is like that, my children are like this, mother look after them. All right, in the beginning is all right. When you grow, you must get out of it. It's an individual journey towards God when you meditate. And when you reach there, then you become collective. Before that, it's an absolute individual journey within. Absolutely individual journey. You should be able to see this, that in this journey, Nobody is your relation. Nobody is your brother. Nobody is your friend. You are absolutely alone. Absolutely alone. You have to move alone within yourself. Don't hate anyone. Don't be irresponsible. But in meditative mood, you are alone. No one exists there. You alone. And once you enter into that ocean, then the whole world becomes your family. The whole world is your own manifestation. All the children become your children, and you treat all the people with equal understanding. The whole expansion takes place when you enter inside your spirit and see start things through the eyes of the spirit. With such calm, such peace, such bliss exists within you. You have to be ready for that journey. That journey <coughs> is alone in your meditativeness. And the more you find something in your meditation, the more you want to go and distribute it to others. That has to be. If that does not come into you, then it has not worked out. There's no purity. There's some sort of a bias. In that individual pursuit, whatever you find, you want to enjoy it with others. You want to give it to others. This is the sign of a person who has been really meditative. The one who is meditative and has not been able to distribute what he has found is cheating himself and cheating others as well. Because that joy that you receive in your meditation has to be distributed, has to be given, has to be shown. It should flow in your being as the light radiates from every illumined lamp. You don't have to
take a vow to say that this is an enlightened light. In the same way, a saint should not be certified that he is a saint. The depth you achieve within yourself spreads all over. It is such an action as a reaction. The more deeper you become, the radiation is much more. But a simple person, very ordinary person, uneducated person can be like that. We have, you know, one gentleman called Vari in Bombay. He is an old man. He is so deep. He radiates. You can depend on him. He radiates love. So meditating. You don't have to spend too much time on meditation. But whatever you spend time, whatever you gain, is has to be visible outside. How you radiate and how you give it to others. That's the quality of the saints you have to be. Unless and until we become deeper, we cannot save other surgeries. And we cannot save those who are not surgeries. You have to rise higher and higher to pull the whole curtain up. Those who try to rise higher pull the whole thing upward. And they give a pull to everyone who ascends to it. So just try to keep your aim clear, clear cut. You must understand what is your aim in life as surgeries. Now you are changed people. You are no more people who have to deal with possessions or worry about them, about mundane things, about your livelihoods. You are no more people who have to worry too much about your health and things or in your personal lives. You are not to worry also about your jobs so much. That's not important. And last of all, not to worry about your family, children, husband, wife, and find a pocket for you to hide into it. Because the only thing where you can really hide yourself is the love of God, where you can really get the great restful, blissful feeling of His complete protection. Sydney has done very well before <coughs> and is progressing better, but the pace is not as it should be. So we have to think of new ways and methods how we can spread this. But first you must assume your positions as you are. You must assume that you are all saints, that you have to do great work. Not the ego part of it, but the manifestation of it. Every one of you has to decide for oneself. I'm sure it's going to work out. And this time my visit is going to help you a lot by understanding what is the best to spread this light. silent meditation for a while. I have uh, four dogs getting a bit playful here, so if they get too noisy, I put the music on, and I can't put them outside because they all go barking at things, so that they have to stay inside. But um, that's a really good exercise to be, to stay detached and stay in faultless awareness.
I'm going to put some music on. If you like to continue in silent meditation, just turn the volume off. I'm going to say goodbye here. Thank you so much for joining in and for your wonderful vibrations this morning. And have a wonderful day. Uh, there's about, about 10 minutes of music. And have a great day. Mano Buddha Hanka
Shivam, Shivam, Shivam. 